Hello dear cello fellows! I'm really thrilled you made it to my channel. My name is Manuel fischer Dieskau. I'm professor for cello and chamber music at the Johannes Gutenberg University in the beautiful city of Mainz, Germany. I've been teaching for about 15 years now and have noticed that, uh, let's say, about 80 till 90% of my students have similar problems and questions while elaborating their cellistic skills. This gave me the idea of developing a sort of uh, modular system for cello technique and interpretation questions that keep appearing again and again in my lessons. The tutorials will be available here on this channel for everybody who might be interested. So, here we are. Let's get started. There are, of course, so many different aspects <clears throat> when we talk about cello playing, cello technique, so it's not easy to choose which we should take for the first session of this new channel. But <clears throat> as you already read uh, in the title of this video, you already know, I'm going to talk about the upper half of the bow today because this is something that's really very close to my heart. Maybe because um, it's so frequent that I see people having trouble producing a nice sound at the upper half of our bow. And this is why, because they, you know, they play like this. And when they come to the tip of the bow, they don't open the forearm. That's already all. But if you're not used to it, this seems really, really far away. It's for many, many cellists, this is a very strange feeling, yeah. So they have a nice sound at the frog, and then they don't open and, and the sound disappears here. And in order to play loud, then they push, they press. Yeah, and this is of course never a solution. You know, you should never use your muscle power, just, just the weight of your arm, but I will talk about that later. This is maybe the most important requirement in order to produce a beautiful full sound is to have a straight bowing yeah, up until the tip of the bow, so that our bow is always parallel to the bridge. I mean, you, you all know that in theory, but uh, when, when it comes to playing, very often we tend to forget. So this is why I would like to talk about this today a little bit. And of course, uh, first we have to Take a step back. I'm pretty sure when you were little and you started to learn the cello, your first teacher told you that from the frog until the middle of the bow, we are using our upper arm. Just upper arm. But then from the middle to the tip, we have to use the forearm. So we reach the tip still parallel to the bridge. This is a little bit, you know, an effort to do, especially on the A string. On the other strings, it's okay because, yeah, because of the angle of the bow. But A string, this seems really far away. So there's a wonderful, <clears throat> the wonderful way to, to get used again because we, we forget these basic things very easily in, in life. We are, we are busy practicing difficult things. Uh, we are most of the time occupied with our left hand. Um, and then we, we forget such basic things, but they are really important because the bow is our lung. You know, singers, when they sing, they need their lungs and the air to produce sound. For us, it's the bow. Without the bow, nothing sounds. You know, it's, we, can, we can have the fantastic technique, left hand, beautiful vibrato, 
Do you hear it? No, you don't. It's the bow that makes all the sounds come out of the instrument. So we should never forget that. This is so important here. Okay, now, there's a wonderful way to get this feeling of uh, opening your arm completely. Put your bow on the tip, on the string, and hold it with your left hand. And then, <clears throat> Just hold the bow with the right hand in the playing position, but at the tip of the bow. And then we glide slowly on the stick of the bow until we reach the frog. And we repeat doing this and we feel in our body this movement of your arm. And, and the moment when really we straighten the arm. We have no other choice because yeah, the, there's the stick of the bow. That helps a lot. And once you get used to this feeling, yeah, then you let go your left hand and you do the same motion, but playing. <laughs> now, there are of course several ways to practice this. The first essential way is I think to play open string, open A string, and to use only the upper half of the bow, and to pay attention that each time you straighten, you open your forearm completely. And it helps to imagine a little crescendo on each down bow, so that the sound does not decrease, but stays equal. This would sound like this. And really, don't forget each time to use the whole bow until the very last millimeters of your hair. That's very important. Many of you young cellists only use your bow until here. And you know, there are so many spots in repertoire where we are lucky and happy and we really need the whole length of the bow. If we give this away, it's not to our best. Okay, so yeah, make sure the whole bow and make sure you have a straight line here. Then we have this wonderful exercise by Sefcik, uh, which is of course originally for violin, but it's as good on the cello. I remember when I was uh, a young cellist, uh, 23, 24, I got my very first orchestra job. At the time it was principal cello in Hamburg, NDR. And um, parallel to the job, I always flew to Finland, to Helsinki, to take lessons with the great cellist Arto Novas and he was the first actually teacher who told me how important it would be to open the arm completely because I didn't do it neither at the time and my sound was poor in the upper half of the bow so he told me about his youth and when he came to Paris and Paul Totelier would teach him this and always with Sefcik. Um, so here, here's how it goes. You will see the, the score on your screen. Now it's very important to play it really slowly, really slowly, and to not forget that each down bow should really use the whole bow until the very last millimeters, as I told you, and always imagine a little crescendo. Each time 
once you do this for one or two lines, you will feel it, you will start to feel it in your arm because you're not used to it. But never mind. It's gonna be fine after a little practice, after one week or two, you will feel much better and you will enjoy this freedom. You know, at the, at the top, it's so important to have this, like a bird that opens the wings. Which brings me to the next wonderful exercise. And this is to continue your bow a little longer than it actually is. Yes, so like an airplane coming from somewhere and then landing here. And continuing further away. Make sure you're still parallel to the bridge. Don't do this. Yeah, so continue, but on this imagined line parallel to the bridge. And we come back. Now, there are many, many examples, of course, in the cello repertoire where we need this, you know, this opening of our arm in order to continue the melody without decreasing energy at the top. Uh, like, for example, beginning of Schumann Concerto. There you really want an endless floating melody. It would be a... is when you have shifts, big shifts, difficult shifts, and you stop your bow, let's take this first E, A, yeah, a Mi, La shift in Schumann. So when I stop my bow, because I don't know how to continue here, and then do the shift, it becomes difficult here as well. So if we continue our bow, we imagine the bow continuing even longer than it actually is, then we give our left hand some room, some space for the shift. And there is no hurry. Yeah, there is no stress in the shift. Here, yeah, so it's like, it's like this. Yeah. Or let's take, for example, Brahms F major. Yes, this shift is a little annoying. Yeah, <laughs> you're always a little bit, <sighs> but you can help yourself with your bow. Yeah. Now, if I if I don't open my forearm, and if I have this blocking here, yeah. Very difficult. I cannot do it. But yeah, when you when you open your arm, the left hand comes almost by itself. So let's repeat. It is really important that you never forget to open your forearm in order to go straight until the tip, until the very last centimeter or millimeter of your bow in order to have a beautiful powerful sound without any effort and to practice this we start with open strings always imagining a little crescendo towards the tip now this becomes too boring for you you can play scales like on a string a major scale. Yeah. And each time think to open completely. Your arm. Don't forget from time to time to hold your bow with the left hand and to do this motion, this movement on the bow stick 
so you feel you you make sure you have the the perfect position yeah don't forget to practice every day several times not too long because otherwise you get too tired but maybe five minutes ten minutes not more those little exercises i just showed you every day two or three times for at least one month or two months self check slowly scales and always doing this effort yeah it's an effort also the effort of thinking of forcing yourself to open the arm completely and really up to the top and if you do this as i told you you will witness a wonderful development of your sound and it's going to be a big step in your personal cellistic development promise <laughs>